this going. All right, so we're gonna go over some really basic stuff really quickly. Nothing that you guys should not be unfamiliar with. Right here, this terminal that I am standing above is your air, basic air terminal. When you interact with your air terminal, you will see multiple different vehicles. Along the list, you will see Galaxy. When you select Galaxy um, in a real continent, you'll actually have presets at the top, little numbers at the top and right, uh, top right uh, side of that window when you actually select the Galaxy. Before you actually spawn now, you'll see those numbers. Each of those numbers represents a preset. Each of those presets, you can set up your Galaxy in, in different formats, different guns, different utilities, defensive performance, as well as appearance and horn and all that other stuff. Um, so I'm uh, just, again, I'm just gonna go over, all, a lot of this stuff is really basic, really straightforward. If you open the tab where it says Galaxy Certs, um, you're going to see utility slots, um, decoy and fire suppression, uh, defensive slots. You're going to have uh, about six different, seven different things. And then you go down to performance and you're going to have your B, uh, basic three f uh, frames, your airframes. So just know that uh, you, with your presets, you could set maybe a racer with bulldogs or you could do a high G with uh, walkers and drakes. Um, and then you can rename that preset, so that way you could you know what that uh, what that loadout is um, on your spawn screen. And the reason why I bring up your spawn screen is because when you spawn in, when you're on the spawn screen on a real continent, you'll be able to see next to all the different classes, you're going to see an empty box that has a circle and a line through, like like do not enter type of sign. If you select that box. You're going to be able to see all the different vehicles that are available from that spawn location. Um, and if that spawn location has an air terminal available, you'll be able to select not only the Galaxy, but then you select the preset that you want. Now, the listing of the presets are in the same numerical order that you set up your your presets. So if, you're, if you select Galaxy, but then select the fourth preset down, it's going to be number four. So whatever your fourth preset is, that's the Galaxy that you're spawning. Um, so it's very helpful, especially uh, with the ability to be able to spawn vehicles from the spawn screen. Um, that is extremely uh, t time consuming and really helpful and uh, to your squad lead as well as uh, just trying to make things uh, easier and quicker on your own behalf. So that's why I want to bring that up. And next I'm going to go ahead and scroll up. Next thing I'm, I'm going to go over is uh, outfit or armory modules. As a member of TG, every member has, uh, has the ability to set um, a module on any hex that we're at. All you have to do is uh, open your map or um, hover over your mini map. You select, uh, you do a right click, and then you go down to uh, module assets. You can't do it in the VR, but if you could just imagine for a minute, you hover over module as assets, The you get another pop-out screen that pops out either to the right-hand side if you have room on your screen, or on the left-hand side if you don't have any room. And then you're going to look for heavy aircraft. That it will be the module that will be that will cover liberators and galaxies. This module um, produces a 30% off cost to your nanites, so you'll be able to uh, spawn your galaxy um, at a cheaper rate, therefore allowing you to not only... Do you guys not hear me? Uh, we couldn't just till just now. Yeah, I didn't hear you for about a minute. Okay, it must be when I'm all tabbed out, then you guys don't hear me. What was the last yeah. thing you heard? Uh, something about scrolling up. Yep. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I didn't skip anything in the first intro part um, about spawning your galaxy, the terminal, and you know, all your different weapons and abilities that the galaxy has available to you. So the next topic I was going to go over is outfit uh, armory modules. So if you select your map screen and you right click, you could even do this on the mini map. A lot of people don't know. If you select control, I believe, it brings up your cursor. If you go to the mini-map, you can actually select your war assets and your you know, all your different squad functions from the mini-map as well. But basically, you would um, right-click to bring up the map options. 
And down at the very bottom of it, you're going to see module assets. Module assets. And if you have room to the right hand side of that, you will get another pop up menu. And that's going to be install heavy aircraft module. That's the one that we're going to focus on. The install heavy module uh, aircraft, uh, heavy aircraft module will give a reduction in cost of nanites. It will reduce the cost of nanites by 30% for two vehicles, the Liberator and the Galaxy. So um, as a member of TG, you have access to, uh, to placing modules anywhere we are. Um, we just ask that if, you, if we go, well, just try to be mindful of how many assets you use. You don't want to put them at every single base. Um, and also, you want to make sure that if you're placing a, a heavy air module uh, asset, a module on a base, you want to make sure the base actually can spawn heavy air <laughs> or has an air terminal. I don't believe you can select the air uh, modules um, on a base that doesn't have the air terminal, but I could be mistaken. I've never actually tried, so I don't really know. <laughs> Just kind of seems straightforward. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it on outfit armory modules and the discounts they provide. All right, next thing we're going to go over is, is the control of the vehicle. Uh, so if you pull up uh, your escape to bring up your, your map, I think, and then go to your settings. If you go down to your keybinds and then select your aircraft, the, as you can see, each one of your functionalities in the game has a, a different set of keybinds that are associated with it. Uh, we're going to focus in on, on the aircraft tab. So in the write-up that will be available shortly, you're going to see my presets. I typically keep it pretty, pretty straightforward. WSA in, uh, as well as D, so Whiskey, Sierra, Alpha, and Delta are your basic throttle up, throttle down y'all left, y'all right. This is where I go a little bit different than some other people. I selected Echo to Ascend, so that will give me Lift. And I selected Charlie for Descend, so to lower my aircraft. Um, I know some other people have some, uh, some other um, choices, and that's perfectly fine. Every single pilot that I've ever contacted and ever flown with um, has their keybinds just slightly different than other Oops, people. Just lost you again. Oh, I'm okay. I'm still here. Test test. Yeah, gotcha. you stop talking for a second. Oh, okay, sorry. Maybe my thumb ran off the button. Welcome, Helena. Thank you. Um, so far, you've only missed uh, the terminal interaction and what terminal provides uh, the galaxy. You've uh, we've gone over presets. Uh, we've gone over spawning the galaxy from the spawn screen, and um, we've gone over outfit uh, asset module and how to get that onto a base. Um, Perfect. So, so right now we're going over keybinds. Um, I just had everyone pull up their keybinds and specifically look at the tab uh, marked aircraft and just kind of go over, going over what I personally have. It doesn't mean that each, in, uh, each of you need to set up the keybinds the same way but know your keybinds before you get in your vehicle. Some people get into uh, a reaver and start getting all wacky in it because they don't know what is go. lift Lost and what you. is this. I'm sorry. I don't know why that happens. This is so weird. And I'm it happens on. to me when I speak on Platoon on Friday, so maybe let off and hit the button again to reset it, maybe. Okay. Let's run on sentences. I can do that. So, um, again, you don't have to have the same keybinds as I do, uh, but know your keybinds um, before you enter the vehicle. So that way you know what buttons to press to do what you need to do. Uh, you don't want to be responsible for a whole squad of TG flying out in the field, and then you don't know how to slow down or you don't know how to descend. Or if you, tur if you move your mouse, you, you definitely don't want yaw to all of a sudden be pitch. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's, it could be very problematic. So just be aware of it. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to see a screenshot of my keybinds on the write up on the Google write up. And, um, that'll be posted after the training once the video is all done and everything. Um, but I'll have that, I'll have the video up and 
hopefully no time flat. My Thursday looks pretty good and my Friday midday is definitely quiet so I should get be able to get the video up pretty quickly. Lost you after pretty quick. Okay, so no, and I was just, I have to alt tab between two monitors and whenever I'm on the second monitor, you guys can't hear me. So I have to alt tab, move my document down a little bit and then come back to you. <laughs> All right, next thing I'm gonna go over is uh, just a few uh, basic terms and basic principles. Taking off. Taking off is pretty simple. Uh, you want to use the ascend key to move the vehicle vertically. So if you um, if you have your button set to echo, which is what Hydro does, uh, that's my default for ascend. Um, once you press uh, once you press echo and you ascend, just make sure you clear any obstacles that may be in your way, and then go ahead and start uh, apply your throttle. For me, that's whiskey. Um, and that'll propel my, my craft forward. And then just get up to whatever altitude you want to fly at and go. That's basically taking off. So just make, make sure you ascend, clear your obstacles, and then set your heading. Next term I want to go over is landing. Uh, when landing, the most important thing to, to know is that you need to slow down. You cannot land the, the galaxy at full speed or basically at any speed. Um, what that's going to entail is um, basically you're grinding the bottom half of your galaxy against the ground and it's going to cause damage to your vehicle. So you basically want to you want to slow down your speed. So throttle back for me, that would be Sierra. And uh, so to slow down your speed. Lower your altitude for uh, for me to descend would be Charlie, and then once you're uh, once you're probably within ten kilometers per per hour, would be a safe time to actually land the vehicle. Um, I'm more prone to zero. Uh, I don't like moving when I'm landing, um, just because I, I've I've burned up my galaxy more than I could tell you. Um, I've I've flown this galaxy a lot in the, over the years. So basically, uh, come to complete spot uh, stop or a virtual complete stop, which is again underneath 10 kilometers per hour. Anything faster than that, you're going to cause damage, and enough damage to your galaxy will result in an explosion of the galaxy, and everybody in the galaxy will die. You don't want to do that, so be aware of that. Uh, flying the galaxy is going to be the next uh, topic, um, and as I mentioned, some keys will be different from player to player but you want to know how to fly your galaxy. So know what it is, uh, some other basic concepts that, uh, that you're going to need to know. Just stay on the uh, platform if you can. I'm going to show, uh, just go over some, some basic terms. This movement, my wings going left and right, just kind of shaking in the air. That is, can anybody, does anybody know what that is? Is that pitch, yaw, or that roll? Roll. Yes, that's that is roll. So just the just the basic movement of my wings going up and down, left and right, and this is done by me moving my mouse just left and right. This is roll. Next function I want to I want to go over is this with my nose and my tail going up and down. Does anyone know if that is pitch or is that uh, uh, yaw? That's pitch. That is pitch. That is correct. Pitch. Next thing I want to go over is this motion. Does me moving my... Hold on. i got to get back up in the air. My galaxy not moving forward, not, not tilting wings, not tilting tail, but just basically kind of... Um, I feel confident saying that's y'all. That is y'all. That is y'all. Okay, so these are three basic terms that any pilot um, should know. You're going to use these three out in the field very often at different times and sometimes in combination with each other. So that's why another thing uh, that I want to make sure that you guys understand is know your key binds. Know which set of keys is going to provide yaw. Know which set of keys is going to provide roll. 
and pitch. Pitch is almost everybody has their pitch on their mouse. Um, most people, um, and I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Next thing, can you get, yes, okay, good. Next uh, thing I want to go over is just a quick little blurb. It's the mentality of the Galaxy Pilot. So your 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 state of mind, the the focus, and what you should. What I'd like to think is your your mindset going into being the pilot for your squad, regardless if you're going to be the the habitual pilot for the squad or if you're just volunteering for a moment. Keep this in mind and just bear with me. The squad leaders still have their beacons and anyone uh, can park a Sunder in a supporting location. But it's the gal pilot that is the one that can always spot incoming Sunderers from a safe altitude, safe distance, and or their location. The, guy, the gal pilot may not have the, ba uh, the best kill death ratio if you do it again and again and again. Um, I've, in the past, I've been a habitual gal pilot, so... Um, that's why you see my KD as bad as it is because 90% of the time I was in the gal pil I was piloting the galaxy almost never on the ground but if you were uh, but if you, but but again if you cared about your kill death ratio you wouldn't have volunteered and expressed interest in being a gal pilot to begin with um, with the galaxy being a spawn point and there's three vehicles in the game that provide spawns the galaxy the Valkyrie and the Sunderer the Galaxy and the Sunderer have the most seats available, 12. The Valkyrie only has 6 seats available. The Sunderer and the Galaxy also allow Maxes to board and use the vehicle as a transport. The, Gal the Valkyrie cannot support a Max unit. So those are the differences between the, th between the three when it comes to uh, capacity and who could board it. Um, it's imperative for the squad leaders to always have that spawn choice available at all, at all times, if achievable, and if the squad leader desires. Some squad leaders want 12, uh, if we have a full squad, some squad leaders want all 12 people on the point on the task. Some squad leaders are okay with leaving their galaxy pilot up in the air. It really depends on the squad leader, and it really depends on the situation that the squad is going into. But if the squad leader is totally okay with you keeping the galaxy, make sure you keep the galaxy safe either outside of the hex at a hot extremely high altitude or somewhere really defendable uh, defensible um, no defendable and just making sure that that spawn choice is available to that squad lead the gal pilot must be patient at all time and really use their their communication tools uh, some people may know about the ABCs of communication Tactical Guard uses the triple D's, so distance, direction, and description. Um, if you do know the ABCs, you'll know that those are accuracy, brevity, and clarity. They're pretty much the same thing, and they encompass the same same overall thought. But when you're using your your triple D's, you must go ahead as Bell uh, already gave. Direction is the most important thing because you want to make sure that instead of having your two eye eyeballs on the target, you want to get as many of your uh, squad's eyeballs on the target. So always give direction first. Then comes distance. Then comes um, uh, distance, direction, and description. So last would be the description of what you're looking at. Once you have eyeballs on the target, everybody can come up with their own description. But you want to give, make sure you give uh, the direction first. Get the eyeballs on the target. And try to communicate effectively. And the biggest thing that a lot of players have a problem with is brevity. You don't need to ramble on and on. You don't need to go about, every, say everything that you're doing. Squad lead, galaxy is available for spawn if needed. That's it. Done. You don't need to tell them where you are. You don't need to tell them that you're getting shot at. You don't need to tell them anything else. Let them know you're safe, you're available. Squad lead will then make the choice to use you or to not use you. And if they don't want to use you, they'll tell you what to do. If they want to use you, they'll give you instructions to either stay there, get moving, move north, whatever the case may be. 
you want to provide you're you're a, a tool for the squad leader so the, the whole point of being a tool is to be available be in good health be safe so that's the mentality of the gal. So that's what your mindset should be. If you're flying the galaxy, you are an extension of the squad leader. And you're you're trying to help the squad succeed in whatever the squad leader is trying to get done. And you're the mode of transportation. So that'll be that. Alright, next thing is initial setup. Um, make sure you have the correct loadout for the task. Um, you want to know what mode you're in. Sometimes uh, we just need a, a taxi. So that's going to just basically be a transportation gal. And sometimes you want to be a battle gal. Sometimes he wants to keep... Uh, sometimes you want to keep the galaxy up and engage with enemy air or enemy uh, vehicles on the ground or spam a doorway. N know very clearly which mode you're in. Are you just transporting or are you going to be engaging? The reason why you want to make that distinction is because of guns because of airframe, because of utility, and because of the overall manner of how you're going to fly the craft. So that's very important to know ahead of time before you pull your galaxy so you can pull the correct galaxy for the task that's being given to you. Next thing, you want to pull the galaxy from a safe location and then await further orders. I have seen way too many gal pilots, uh, pilots over through my years that will just automatically pull a galaxy either from the immediately closest location to the squad or from all the way back in, uh, at the warp gate. Neither of those is a bad thing or a good thing at just at, at point blank, but they can be good and bad depending on situations on the ground. So you want to pull it from a mid-range location. Mid-range locations will typically give you a safe spawn and then once you spawn, don't start flying any, any which way you know, any which way you want to go. Wait for further orders. Again, you're an extension of the squad leader. So wait for your squad leader to give you an order. Sometimes the squad leader will say, go ahead and, uh, uh, Belhe, go ahead and grab a galaxy and um, start flying north. Okay, you have your marching orders. Spawn your galaxy from a safe location and start heading north. Sometimes they just say, uh, I need a volunteer for a galaxy. Helena uh, volunteers. Okay, Helena, go ahead and grab a galaxy. So before Helena starts closing in on the squad, he doesn't know if he wants the squad to to get picked up uh, on the uh, at the base they're at. He uh, we don't uh, the bat galaxy pilot doesn't know if he's going to have the squad redeploy to the galaxy. There may be a time issue. He may need to get the galaxy moving to the target before he even gives the order to the squad, just to reduce that that uh, flight time. For the squad he wants to keep the squad busy so you you basically don't know what the squad you you can't read minds so allow the squad leader to, to to do their job and give you the order before you start making decisions for the squad leader and basically if you start flying to the uh, to whatever target say uh you fly start flying to the squad what if a whole air ball just flew in and you're already committed now they see you and they take out the galaxy. Now what have you done to the squad leader? You have obligated him to now figure out another mode of transportation or another uh, come up with a different plan from what he had originally intended. You don't want to be that guy. So let the squad leader do his job or her job and you as the galaxy pilot, you do your job. Be patient. The, the squad leader is well aware of what you're doing and especially if they ask for a volunteer or if they know you're their galaxy pilot be patient let them give you an order stand by await further instructions that's the safest thing i can tell you third thing about the initial setup of the galaxy and being a gal pilot is as a gal pilot i would highly highly recommend that uh, the gal pilot be an engineer should be pretty straightforward and pretty self-explanatory. You may get shot. You may get. You may bump into a, a tree branch. You may come in a little bit hot on a landing. Odds are your galaxy is going to have some kind of damage at some point. You don't always want to um, utilize your utility for um, self-repairing galaxy. You, you're going to want to keep your galaxy as 
with as many hit points as possible at all times. So, Engineer allows you to do that. No other class uh, can fix a galaxy, only the Engineer. Uh, let's see. It's also uh, another thing I want to bring up to bring to your mind or bring to attention to is Engineer specifically have access to the passive certification called Aircraft Synergy. If you max out this cert line, you will gain auto, repa auto repair level one while flying a, a heavy aircraft, specifically the Galaxy. And that'll be in addition to the, de the defensive slot that you've chosen. So, not, some, some pilots don't know that. They had no idea that there is a passive certification that will benefit the Galaxy. So, that's under Engineer. And again, it's a passive ability. Any questions so far? Thank you for covering the aircraft synergy. That's a good one to know. You're very welcome. All right, so the next thing I'm going to go over are the modes of the galaxy. I already uh, touched on it really briefly. There's two modes of the galaxy. Um, you could be a battle gal or you could be a transport gal. But before we get to that, there's a, a difference on how you fly. You could fly at low altitude or you could fly at high altitude. Now, there's plenty of different measure measurements you could you could go by. I just make it really simple. Below 500 meters is low altitude. Above 500 meters, high altitude. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So just keep that in mind. When I say low altitude, I'm talking about uh, beneath 500 meters. When I say high altitude, I mean above 500 meters. It doesn't mean at flight ceiling. Flight ceiling is flight ceiling. But if I say high altitude, just be above 500. And if I say low altitude, come in below 500. That's just generally that's how I keep it. Now, when you're, uh, there are some benefits to both. Uh, always, uh, when you're doing a drop, it is always best to come in at a low altitude. It's the quickest way to get your guys onto the target and get them into battle. Odds are, there's a force at a base that we're going to in some way, shape, or form, and we need to get in there and be, get brutes on the ground as quick as possible. You can do that from a, high, uh, from a high altitude. It's not recommended because it takes roughly about five seconds just to get a drop from high altitude. So, instead of losing five seconds of just air time floating through the air, why not use those five seconds to gain the first floor and start working your way up the stairs? That's why you want to come in at low altitude and always try to do a drop at low altitude. High altitude is better for transit, especially if there's a lot of air resistance or ground resistance. You'll have uh, bursters, you'll have anti-air uh, anti buses, uh, you may have enemy air. For whatever the case may be, high altitude is always prevalent and always beneficial if you're going uh, a decent distance on the map. Um, it, it gives you safety. For some reason, most pilots don't really look up. They always keep their eyes down because the majority of their targets are going to be down. There's only a, a small percentage that's actually going to be in high altitude. So if you're just trying to get from A to B in a safe manner, High altitude is a safe way to go. Um, medium altitude. Uh, I'm not really going to go over that because that's when you start getting into the minutia. Just know that there is a little, there is a zone somewhere between 400 and say 700 meters. That's medium altitude technically, but just keep it at 500 below or above. Makes it nice and easy. Uh, covered high altitude drops and low altitude. Another benefit of low altitude is it, it allows for quicker time to begin repairs, especially when you're under fire. There are many times that the galaxy will get will be getting tailed by one or two mosquitoes or one or two sites, and for whatever reason, squad lead doesn't want to continue on and just let the guns fire. He may call the galaxy to land. And then to get the engineers out and out repair the damage being caused. At that point, you want to make sure that you keep the gunners in your gun seats. Keep them on target. Keep them engaged. Heavy assaults, they might have an annihilator in their back pocket. You don't know. 
but they may ha they may have a Godsaw. Godsaw has an alternate fire that can do damage to armored targets. That would be that would be useful as well, especially if it's a Liberator that's targeting you. It's not always an ESF. But for whatever uh, for whatever the reason the squad leader calls uh, to go ahead and land, you want to make sure that you're you're coming at a low altitude. Get on the ground. Get your engineers out. Get them fixing right away. Then remind the gunners go ahead and stay in your guns. Go ahead and stay on target. Heavy assaults outside. Go ahead and uh, put rounds on the target. The engineers will top off your your galaxy, and then you can load up and then you move on and continue on doing whatever you were doing. Pretty straightforward. Next thing I'm going to go over is the battle gal itself. So there's a, a couple, uh, two different things about the uh, about each of the loadouts. Um, one is going to be, be your behavior. So the behavior of a of a battle gal just by nature, because you are battling, you are in an aggressive stance. So you're not going to be standoffish at 500 meters, just plucking away with a drake. You want to you want to be able to engage your target. Um, fairly close not right on top of them but you want to be close um, you might want to be able to engage ground targets with bulldogs or pelters you may want to assist in spawn suppression you may want to assist with air superiority with your walkers and your hyenas now the hyena is on the galaxy is the top gun and it could only be equipped on the top gun the hyena specifically is a proximity lock-on anti-air um, rocket so most gunners that you'll come across in this game are not good with the hyena it takes it takes some time and some practice to get used to it if you don't have the hyena as your top gun that's okay but make sure you have a walker the drakes are not good for the top and rear gun because of the fact that um it adds that extra damage for anti-air Yes, it can do damage to ground targets, and that's great, but you want that extra little boost for uh, for anything flying, um, especially, like I said, top guns and tail gun. Your wing guns, that could be any uh, any choice you have. You could have the Pelter, you could have the Bulldog, or you could have the Drake. Depending on what you're engaging, may determine which gun you have, uh, which gun you want to keep on target. Bulldogs are really great for anything with a little bit of splash damage, so doorways, that's a good thing. Anywhere there's congregation of, of enemy, Bulldog is, is a good choice. If you have a static target but no real congregation, maybe a part sunderer, a Pelter will outshine the Bulldog. If you have a fairly mobile target like an ESF or um, a target, um, a fast-moving harasser, odds are the Drake is going to outdo your other two guns. But again, they are all interchangeable depending on the pilot and most importantly, depending on the gunner. I have seen a, a Drake, a really great Drake gunner be masterful at a Pelter gun and be masterful with a, a Bulldog gun and vice versa. So if you're fairly uh, familiar with the people, they'll be able to uh, tell you what they're really good with and how to set up your, your guns. It may make things a little bit easier for you out in the field. Another thing about the behavior of the galaxy, because of the reduced proximity to your target, what you want to do is you want to make sure you have multiple guns on your target. Most people know to keep your tail gun and a wing gun on your target, but if you just give it a little bit of yaw or a little bit of pitch, you'll be able to add the top gun. Having three of the four guns of the galaxy on a specific one target is a great great thing but it does take a little bit of flying you may need to hover and descend descend forward thrust a little bit maybe stop ascend descend maybe a little bit more pitch and roll so it's a little bit more um key bind heavy and a little bit more demanding on your left hand if if that's what you're using for your keyboard i i don't know why i just said that everybody uses their left hand never mind <laughs> anyway, but it's going to be a little bit more demanding as a as a gal pilot to put three guns on your target instead of just two. I did also didn't get a chance to read. Okay, that's great. Yep. Yeah, okay, good. Um. So yeah, if you can get three guns on your target, that I would try to recommend doing that. 
you should never have less than two guns on a target. There's no reason. One of the biggest problems I see pilots do, and which kind of irks me, when you're getting chased by an ESF, most galax uh, specifically yes, ESFs, and th for this specific example, when you're getting chased by an ESF, I typically see gal galaxy pilots just fly straight away, just literally point the nose directly opposite of where your target's coming from and fly in that direction. There's a problem. The top gun can't f can't see past the tail fin of the galaxy, and it creates a visual obstacle. So what you want to do is just give a little bit of yaw, go a little off-centered, keep your nose maybe at 11 o'clock or at 1 o'clock, just to provide that top gunner that view that they can see the target behind them. So I understand you're trying to fly away. I get it. Been there, done that. But you want to get that second gun on your target, and odds are, if you with a little bit of uh, a little bit of turning, a little bit of a uh, yaw, you'll be able to not only create the top gun, give it, give them a view. You might be able to give your wing gunner a view. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Okay. Well, hey, that's for advanced classes. <laughs> I have plenty of videos on that. <laughs> or in my videos, you'll see that. I, I love doing that. Okay, so the loadout. I've kind of gotten, gone over it. Uh, loadout, top and tail. Uh, you want to have your walkers. Um, hyena, if you have an experienced gunner. On your wings, you can have any of the three. Um, for a battle gal, I would probably go, at least right now, I would probably go bulldogs. Because with the, with the buff that they got... I don't even four months ago, six months ago. Um, Bulldogs seem like they're the strongest w uh, one of the three at the moment, and just the added bonus of a little bit of splash. So, if you're if push comes to shove and you only have two hundred certs and you're looking, you're deciding which gun am I going to start with for your wings? I'd probably if you, if you're intending on being a battle gal, I would probably go with uh, Bulldogs per, right now. Other setups, uh, utility, I would recommend uh, fire suppression, but you could definitely use flares. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It, it all comes down to personal uh, personal choice. Defense uh, slot, I would uh, recommend composite 4 or nanites 5. I personally recommend nanites 5, but there is an argument to be made for composite. Performance, this is all uh, the pilot. Some pilots swear up and down by racer. Some pilots swear up and down by high G. Some pilots swear up and down by precision. Whichever one is most comfortable for you. The the difference really is not noticeable speed wise, turn wise, landing wise, pitch wise. There really is no difference. They they have slight minor differences, but with how we play and how fast the game moves. You're, you're really not going to see it in a galaxy. In an ESF, you're definitely going to notice it. And in a Valkyrie, you're definitely going to notice it. Even in a Liberator, you're, you are going to you are going to notice that. But in a big tub, a big whale like this thing, you're really not going to see the difference. Uh, at least not as noticeable as you would with the other vehicles. Oh, if I didn't, I thought I mentioned it, but if I didn't mention it, Aircraft Synergy does stack with your uh, auto repair. So you get an extra little boost. I thought I mentioned that. Well, maybe I didn't. Sorry if I didn't. I'm sorry, you said does or does not? It does indeed stack. Interesting. It does stack. That'd be a ton of healing. Yes. Um, the last thing I would uh, mention just on the battle gal itself. A battle gal is... is the least amount of gunners that you would have in a battle gal would be two. One, I would put in uh, guns two or three, and just they just bounce from, from top to tail. That's all they do. And then another gunner on the wings, four and five. So that person just bounces between four and five, left and right. Once you have more gunners than that, you can still run a very effective battle gal. But if you want to have multiple uh, galaxies and multiple vehicles and multiple guns pointing at stuff... 
I would recommend two gunners. And I, again, one, just put them in top and tail, and the other gunner on the wings. After that, best of luck to you. The next thing, uh, the other mode I'm going to go over is transit gal. So it's just, you're literally just transporting from A to B. Uh, your behavior is going to be cautious. Uh, so you're not aggressive. You want to stay at distance. Remember, you're there for transportation. Your number one priority is getting the crew to drop alive. Your secondary is the gal to keep it alive. But your primary goal is to get to target. It doesn't matter how you get to the target. It doesn't matter if you're on fire by the time you get to the target. But get to the target. Um, obviously, you don't want to be on fire when you get there. But <laughs> try to, Always try to be cautious on your approach. Uh, choosing high versus low. Using terrain to hide behind and, and, and kind of weave your way through. All of that is very valid. But... Your, again, number one priority, get to the target with your with your crew, drop them uh, alive so they could actually affect the target, whether that be a spawn spot, uh, a sunderer location, or to be on a building to go infiltrate and take the point, or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Get your, get your team to the target. So you want to be cautious on your approach. Your loadouts are going to be slightly different. Um... Walker and, uh, walkers, I would recommend uh, over the hyena um, for your top and tail. And I would switch the guns to drakes. The reason for that, most galaxies that are, are flying from A to B don't really want to divert and take an obtuse roundabout way to get to their target. They'll usually choose the straightest line, typically. That's not a bad thing, and it's not a good thing. It just depends on the people that are online and flying in the air at the time. But the reason why I bring this up is because if you do happen to come across an EFS, e ESF swarm, and I, I define swarm as three or more, if you get three ESFs on you, um, you're not going to have any good firing from a pelter or a bulldog. I'm sorry, hate to break it to you. It's not, you might be able to get one, sh one round on them in a magazine of either one of those guns, but they're going to have to be extremely lucky. The gunner's going to need to be very lucky. Your best bet is Drake's. Drake's, they do a little, enough damage to scare off your target. They tip, they really won't destroy your target. They won't really kill. But it just adds to the to the worry of, of the opposing pilot that oh I'm I need to repair oh I can't take this Galax oh I need to I need to pull, peel off it just gives them that he that moment of hesitation and it makes them think for that split second that and typically will pull off if they're if they're if they're worried about the craft they'll they'll pull off so I would recommend Drakes for the wings if you're doing a transit gal. All right, and since uh, in a battle gal you don't typically do this, but in a transit gal you do this all day, let us go ahead and load up the galaxy real quick. And while you're running to the galaxy and loading up, do you have any questions so far? Okay. In the transit. What do you think of top Drake? What's that? What do you think of top Drake? <laughs> I think it's useless. Yeah. Top, I would only entertain Walker or Hyena, only. All right, so in a galaxy and um, typically in all transit gals, you're probably going to do a drop at some point. So you uh, first, there's a few things that you want to you want to know about your drop. You want to locate your target drop zone on the map so you know what terrain you're going to be flying and dropping into, and the situation that you're going to be dropping your squad into. So any kind of intelligence ahead of time will benefit you as a pilot. Um, perfect example, Bittel stockpile. If you pull up your map right now and go to Hassan and you scroll in on Bittel stockpile, it is in your southwest of the continent, right next to the Bittel, uh, Bittel bio lab. If you look to the west, you'll see Bittel stockpile. And in the middle of that base on the, on the west side, above a four square, so just north of a four square, and just southwest of the triple stack, 
you're going to see another triple stack, but that triple stack has a canopy on it. The reason why I bring your attention to this specific base, because if you drop inaccurate there, your squad's going to be scattered all over the place. To the immediate west, you have a cliff and a plateau. To the immediate north, you have a tree, a falling down tree trunk. To the immediate south, you have your enemy approach from the spawn room. Immediately to the east is the wraparound for that same spawn room or people coming in from the road. So this base, uh, just for this example, is, an, is an, a very important base to know your terrain ahead of time. Bit and got scared. I think he got scared. <laughs> anyway, so looking at your map, uh, knowing your terrain ahead of time, um, knowing how precise or imprecise your drop is allowed to be, is a very is is something important to know same thing with uh, conditions on the ground if you know there's a whole bunch of anti-air uh, in the ground you don't want to be coming in at a high altitude the thing with anti-air uh, defense is that they need a target in the air i see too many pilots that when they get engaged with anti-air they immediately pull up on the galaxy and start climbing that is the exact opposite of what you should do. You need to dive. You need to use the terrain. Use any kind of mountains, hills, trees, anything to break that lock on. Terrain masking, yes. You want to use the terrain to, to create some kind of interference with what they are trying to do. So, obviously, you're not going to find a mountain up in the air. You're only going to find it on the ground. You're not going to find a tree up there either. So that's why I bring bring these uh, these points up. Next thing I want to uh, want to bring uh, bring up to you on your on your flight to a target is to plan out your flight route. A good use of this is a uh, is your personal waypoint. A lot of people don't use their personal waypoint. Some people use it all the time. I use my personal waypoint to know my edge, the edge of my uh, hot spots or my my flight path so if I go to the right of it or to the left of it I know I will be engaged by whatever's at that neighboring base or whatever is on approach so it's kind of like my border mark if you will some people use their personal waypoint to to create a fly-through point if they're taking a, a roundabout way they may want to create a I don't know how to explain it they may want to go north first and then turn east um, towards the target. So you may want to use your personal waypoint to mark what location you think will be safe and then turn. So you can use your personal waypoint to assist your, your flight. Next thing I'm going to go over is you want to verify uh, if, it's, if you're dropping with other squads. This is one thing uh, TG actually does a lot of. Or we're trying to do more of it. We're tr uh, there very often you'll see Alpha Galaxy, Bravo Galaxy, Charlie Galaxy, and or Delta Galaxy meet up in a neutral uh, neutral hex, and then they'll move out together. Know ahead of time. Once you have your crew on board, simple question, uh, squad leader: Are we are we dropping with Bravo? Are we dropping with Charlie? It doesn't take long to ask. It doesn't hurt. Just make sure you're not talking over the squad lead. If we are dropping with them, then then he'll tell you. If he's if we're not, then he'll tell you. Next thing uh, I want to go over is when you are doing a drop, and I'm just going to go to the south and go to the box tower here. I'm going to mimic a drop without actually having you guys drop out because I want to keep you in the gallery for a moment. So on approach, you're, you already know your, your terrain. You already know where you're going to be dropping. You already know the situation on the ground and what they're dropping into. Guys, I'm going to drop you on the air pad. Get ready for a drop. This is the, what you should be saying. Guys, get ready to drop in three, two, one. Drop, drop, drop. 
and that will drop them directly on the air pad. If I go to immediately to send, I am on the air pad. The reason why we want to give them a countdown, they may be all tabbed. They may be have taking a drink of something on their desk. They may be stuff in their mouth. Whatever the case may be, it does not cost you anything to give them a heads up and a countdown. You want to be very clear in your countdown. Three, two, one. And then you want to repeat the drop call three times. Drop, drop, drop. Most importantly, when you're doing that drop call, you don't want to have any momentum. You want to make sure you come to a stop. Now you can come to a stop in many different ways. You can use your ascend, descend. You can use yaw. You can use pitch. You can use roll. Uh, I typically don't use roll though. Not too much anyway. Um, but you want to come to a complete stop. Reason for that is because if the squad members bounce off of the galaxy, bounce either off of the side of it, or if you're descending when you call the drop and they land on, or they drop out of the galaxy but are on top of the galaxy and falling on top of on top of it, and then they deflect off and hit the ground, you've already canceled their their fall immunity. You'll remember fall immunity was covered in the movement training by Helena a couple months ago. Fall immunity is very good, but with a bad galaxy pilot that just literally. Uh, like, for example, I'm going to call it drop right now, and I do want you guys to drop. Get ready to drop in three, two, one. Drop, drop, drop. Now, look at that. You guys all dropped on top. Uh, fr uh, when you dropped out of the galaxy, you were all on top of, uh, above the galaxy, I should say. If, you're, if your pilot has any kind of momentum going forward, you would have hit the, the wing. I, I purposely didn't because I didn't want to kill anybody here <laughs> and if they're flying at full speed they might actually hit the tail wing um you don't want to cancel that fall immunity to your squad that just creates problems for the squad leader and trying to achieve their uh, their task and if you're going at it at, at speed you might actually accidentally kill somebody you don't want to do that uh cover the drop covered not moving covered drop zone uh, covered death. Okay. Hi, Drew. Yeah. Do you have time for just a quick test, something that I heard about in the last uh, year or so? Sure. Here, um, let me give you your... Here you go. You have the gal. Oh, okay. Well, if you guys don't mind, go to seats, uh, I would say, like, 7, 9, and 11. I'm going to try to mimic what Hydro did there with the descending. Let me get some altitude first. I'll do the drop call. So what I've heard was that in the past, uh, we all, well, I know we all exited from one location. That's no longer the case. So when I, I call the drop, all of you should be, I guess, on the left-hand side if you look at the, uh, the green galaxy outline on the top right-hand side of your screen. So let's get ready in three, two, one. Drop, drop, drop. Okay, so yeah, all of you did exit basically in a line there uh, based on your, off of your seat location. So that's just something else to consider that ties in with the uh, point that Hydra was making before about exit location and not hitting the galaxy. Thank you. That was the, I was like, wait a minute, there's something else here and I couldn't find it, but I do have a bullet point on that. <laughs> all right. Um... That's pretty much, yeah, it's my note here. All right. Um, I've typically in the past run a class where you actually need to demonstrate that you could do all these uh, different bullet points and do a successful drop. I'm not going to do that tonight, so don't worry about that. Pick a procedure. Let's get you on the ground. Hold on. All right, and drop. See how, how Bidden? I was still drifting. So Bidden lost his fall immunity. Luckily, I was low enough that it didn't really affect him. Okay, so pick a procedure. Um, odds are the squad leader is going to put down a squad waypoint or a fire team waypoint. He'll tell the squad to rally at that point, and then he'll call the galaxy in. Now, this is very important to, to understand. 
you don't want to head to the LZ before your squad leader tells you to. Seems pretty straightforward. Seems pretty simple. But don't do it. Reason for that is you don't know about that the conditions on the ground. Only your squad that's actually on the ground. Unless you have a viewpoint of it, you don't know what you're flying into. So wait for the squad leader to give you a go-ahead to, to bring that vehicle in. Next thing, uh, you want to get there in a timely fashion. You don't want to go in a roundabout way. Uh, keep an eye on the base timer if they're capping the base or they're re-securing the base. You want to make sure you keep an eye on that, uh, that base timer. And depending on your distance, you're going to want to move in in a fairly quick fashion. You don't, you don't want to dilly-dally. If the base has less than one minute left on the timer, you're going to want to leave a little bit early, prob probably in most locations, probably 20, 25 seconds away from capture. Now, there's two different ways to, to pick up your squad. The first one is pre pretty straightforward. You land and you load. Make sure you're not landing on top of them. Uh, sometimes you do you do squish people and you don't want to kill people. You want to keep them alive. So when you're preparing to land, make sure you're close to the ground. Make sure you stop all forward momentum. You want to uh, tilt your galaxy away from the LZ and use your descent key. Um, so again, uh, tr try not to squish your squad members and don't leave the LZ until all load ups, uh, until everybody's loaded up. No load up should take longer than eight seconds. And this is something that that if you're the gal pilot, you want to you want to put that oomph in that that kind of ur sense of urgency into your voice. Like, guys, I'm at the LZ. Let's go. Where I'm going to be taking off in five seconds. Come on, guys. I'm just waiting on two more people. Let's go. We got to load up and then and then go. And most uh, most people understand a sense of urgency when they're actually listening to you. So if you have a little bit of sense of urgency, like we got to go, odds are they're going to stop doing what they're doing and, and jump in the gal. Next thing I'm, uh, next uh, method to pick up squad members is do, to do a flyby scoop. Now let's see, is squad way, let me move squad way just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to do a flyby scoop. I need everybody at squad way and literally at squad way. Now, this takes a little bit more precision, a little bit more um, finesse, if you will. When, you're, when you know ahead of time that you're going to do a flyby scoop, you need to know your obstacles in the way. Mountains, trees, most importantly, and any kind of rocks on the ground. And you can see all that from your, from your map screen. You want to do a flyby scoop when time is of essence. If your squad leader is moving quickly, and yes, you did hear me snap my fingers. If you know that squad leader is moving quickly or we have very short time on his next target that he's already told everybody about and you want to try to do a flyby scoop, you want to announce ahead of time you're doing a flyby scoop. When you're coming in for a scoop, you want to come in at a reduced speed and a reduced altitude, but never on the ground and never stop moving. Get ready to load. Three, two, one. Load, 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 load. Jump, 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 jump. And that's how you want to do it. You want to come in low. You want to keep your nose up, but you want to almost drag your tail. And once you get it in a close enough position, you want to instruct your squad to jump and get in. If, you're do if you do it properly, you'll have the same experience that we just had. The galaxy came in nice and uh, not totally slow, but slow enough that no one's going to get um, damage from hitting the galaxy if they accidentally mistime their interact key. And they're going to be able to jump in, and you're never going to stop stop moving. This is extremely useful, again, when you know time is against you. So, uh, kind of finer points on this. You don't want to be higher than 15 meters, and you should not exceed 100 kilometers per hour, no matter what. Anything faster than 100 kilometers per hour, you're going to kill somebody. Trust me. Anything higher than 15 meters above the squad, above the ground level that they are at, it's too high. They're not going to be able to get to you. So you want to make sure, and this is the only time I would recommend actually flying first person. Reason for that is because of your speed. Not because of your height. You should be able to line up your height on approach. 
but you don't know about speed. You could eyeball it just based on flying, but you, you definitely want to know how fast you're coming in. It's, if you're not if you're not pulling galaxies every day or on a routine basis, you may not know how fast. Like right now, do you do you guys know how fast I'm going right now? Fifty. Fifty. Yeah. I was gonna say one twenty-five. Actually, we're, we're we're moving pretty good. I am moving at eighty-seven mi uh, eighty-seven kilometers per hour. So, the galaxy, because it's so big, and because it takes up such a big uh, field of view uh, profile, it's it's a little misleading as to how fast you are actually going. You all thought I was, except for Bidden, you all thought I was going at 50. I was going at nearly half as, 50% more, 50% faster than what you guys thought. Almost 40% faster. Because I was in first person, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, you definitely... That's the only time I uh, would recommend going first person. All other times, I would recommend staying in third person. Normally, uh, if I was running a class, I would have uh, a demonstration of this. Don't worry about that. I'm not doing that today. N any questions about the uh, modes of uh, galaxy and pickup? Uh, pickup. Okay, moving on. Next uh, blurb I want to go over, and there's two blurbs back to back, so please be understanding. And the next thing I want to go over is the mechanics employed by the galaxy pilot. The Galaxy pilot should be using his or her vertical thrust 90% or more of the time that they are in flight, regardless of which frame the Galaxy has. Sorry, my fault. Thrust adds to your overall speed with your nose of the Galaxy down up to 25 to 30% down angle. And, it, and that's without sacrificing altitude. Knowing where you're... I hate when people do that. Anyway, knowing where your friendly forces are at any given point should uh, should be at the top of your list of knowing uh, of knowing things while you're in flight. Just in case you have to drastically change your flight plan due to enemy a uh, anti-air or enemy ESFs. Keep in mind that AA usually requires a target to be in the air. So, like I mentioned earlier. You want to you want to mask your uh, you want to mask yourself with the terrain av available to you. Um, so that should be your your impulse. If you're flying the galaxy, your impulse should not be to go up. It should be to dodge. And that again, that's for anti-air. So if you know you're getting hit by a burster or by a turret, dive. If you're getting hit by uh, a harasser chasing you. Hopefully, find find a mountain, find some kind of terrain feature, and get away from them <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. You should be able to get away from them unless the, you literally flew into them and you're flying over them. And at that point, yeah, good luck. When approaching to uh, when approaching a drop zone, line up your flight path with the best chance to get most of your crew either on the point itself. Or with a spot that will provide an overhead position so they can suppress the point or the sunderer. Now, that's another thing that um, sometimes we do do. Sometimes we'll set up on, on a ridge line um, or on a plateau and we'll, we'll shoot at a target from range. So, know, know that ahead of time. So, try to line up your flight path with, uh, with the highest chance of getting your crew on the specific target that your squad leader has directed you to. And uh, another thing about uh, uh, your galaxy, remember, Maxes love their gal pilots. They'll wait for you instead of having to find a new ride for their big, big, uh, big butts. A pickup should take no longer than eight seconds ever. If the gal isn't loaded within that time frame, they didn't arrive at the galaxy too late. Keep that in mind. They didn't arrive at the galaxy too late. You arrived at the uh, LZ too early 
late arrivals uh, to the LZ should redeploy and not be late for the next loadup. Okay, so just again to, to frame that again. If uh, squad leader calls for a pickup, squad leader should be trying to wrangle all those cats at the at the LZ so that you could either do a flyby scoop or you could do a quick land, load, and then go. If they're not uh, loaded up within eight, eight seconds, go ahead and take off. Squad leader's got stuff to do. He's got targets that he wants us to kill. Let whoever didn't make it to the galaxy, let him know. Sorry, we took off. You got You got to redeploy. There's no harm, no foul, no hurt feelings. Just be diplomatic about it. And hopefully by them getting called out on, hey, sorry, you were late to the galaxy, you got to redeploy. Maybe that little bit of shame that you just gave them, maybe, maybe, maybe that'll, that'll provide a little bit of motivation on the next pickup and they won't be late on it. Doesn't need to, uh, you don't need to harp on it and you don't need to, to overemphasize it. Just letting them know, hey, you were you were late to the LZ, got to redeploy to get on the galaxy, sorry. And hopefully next time, it'll work out. Next thing I want to go over is the posture of the galaxy pilot. The galaxy pilot needs to understand his frame extremely well. Meaning that if you have a racer versus a high G, you'll know how much angle, how much pitch you'll need to, you'll need to avoid a mountain peak with a drop zone right after the mountain peak. So for example, this is the only time that airframe, knowing your airframe is gonna be somewhat important. Let me get in position. All right, so if I'm dropping you on the plateau right after the peak, after the peak, sorry, you wanna know how much down angle you, you need to clear that, that spire to get, your, uh, to get your crew onto this plateau. Racer, you're going to need a lot more down angle. High G, you're not going to need that much uh, down angle because high G, your thrusters will do a lot of the work. Precision will also give you a medium uh, boost to that. But again, like I mentioned earlier, you should be using your vertical and your descent thrust anywhere about nine, roughly about 90%. When I'm flying like this, my throttle's already maxed. I can't do anything about speed. The only thing I could do for speed is I could go off kilter, give uh, give my wings a little tilt, give my nose a little tilt, and thrust. That just gave me eight kilometers per hour faster. So you can manipulate your speed, but you need to know your frame, and you need to know the best way to manipulate and maximize your frame for specifically for speed. Let's see, where do I leave off? Terrain, flight paths, drop zone. Okay, that's all I wanted for the posture. And again, the write-up for, for this training will be on the, on the Discord, so you'll be able to see that um, in the coming 48 hours. Piloting the galaxy itself. You want to make a direct route to the destination. You'll need to deviate if there's a significant, any kind of significant resistance, specifically AA. You want to avoid areas of high enemy activity. Always check your map before heading out to the destination. Reason for that, if you pull up your map and you can set up a, one of your filters, I, as a galaxy pilot, I recommend clicking the hotspots. Reason for that, the hotspots are not precise but they do give you an idea of what you're flying into. So if you see hotspots all over the hex that you're flying into, choose, you'll be able to see them for two, three seconds and you'll be able to determine the best approach to that drop zone. So hotspots I would recommend turning on if you plan on flying the galaxy very often. Uh, as you saw, I nosed down roughly around 20 degrees while using your vertical uh, thrusters, and that'll provide max speed. Avoid collision with any friendly aircraft. Use your mini-map for awareness, so keep an eye on that mini-map, especially once you start getting closer to the target. 
and you, uh, this one you is very important. Watch for watch out for friendly galaxies dropping from a higher altitude than you. You don't want to be you don't want to be the guy that kills another squad because you've canceled their fall immunity because they landed on you and not the roof of the building. Most of our pilots are pretty good with this because they, they are pretty mini map aware. But it does happen from time to time. So uh, try not to be that guy. You might get some angry t uh, whispers. Unless the squad leader tells you you want to keep your galaxy and you do not want to drop with the rest of the squad. So wait, know what the squad leader wants. You could, you could clear that with the squad leader on approach. You could uh, clear that with the squad leader after your squad's already out of the galaxy. There are plenty of opportunities for you to ask the squad leader, do you want me to keep the gal? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Not where do you want me to keep the gal? Um, there's a base over here. No, you don't need to go into all that. Just keep it simple, stupid. Do you want me to keep the gal? The answer is yes, keep the gal. Go somewhere safe, keep it safe. The answer is no. On your next pass over the over the drop zone, go ahead and bail out of your galaxy. If your if your galaxy is destroyed, let your squad leader know uh, when comms are quiet. Ask them if you should join the ground troops or get another galaxy. You never you're not a mind reader, so you gotta ask. If you're engaged by enemy aircraft, there are two things you you, you could do. If you have already dropped your crew, land, and out repair the damage, uh, out repair the damage that you're receiving. Land and hop in one of the guns on the galaxy to scare the aircraft away. Then repair once the aircraft is gone. You can fly towards friendly uh, anti-air forces or towards the watchtower, so you could have some kind of cover. Or you could call assistance if you have from uh, if you have an air squad in the platoon. If you have not already dropped your crew, so you still have your crew with you, call for assistance from ground forces. And the weapon keeps the weapons yellow by default. It can always be changed by the pilot or the squad leader, and those are the only two people that should be changing any kind of uh, weapon designation. And you want to avoid ramming the gal while it has anybody in it besides you. If you don't care about your KD and you're the pilot and you're all by yourself and you think you can take out a galaxy by ramming it, go for it. If you don't, don't. If you have people other than yourself in the galaxy, don't ram a galaxy. <laughs> the only exception I would recommend for that, and this may go against what Helena will say, and I, I don't really know. We'll find out momentarily. If you're getting chased by a really dumb ESF pilot, and you see they're on a direct approach behind you, they haven't wiggled, like you're looking at the minimap, they're not trying to get a best angle on you, coming at you at like 4 o'clock or at 8 o'clock and create some angle. If they're literally on your 6, slow down, slam on the brakes, descend, and then ascend. Create the biggest profile you can, let the ESF run right into you. An ESF will not take down a galaxy on a ram. Other vehicles, a Valkyrie, maybe, a Liberator, maybe, a Galaxy, 50-50. But if it's an ESF and they're literally flying directly behind you and just shooting you the whole time, slow down, slam on the brakes, make your Galaxy nice and big. Keep it in place and let them ram you. And again, the only time I would recommend this is if you have a really stupid ESF pilot that is literally following you from a six o'clock six o'clock position. All right, and the last thing on my write-up is the cost requirements for all the different things that you would want to put on your galaxy, like uh, your defense mo your defense um, slot, your utilities, your guns. Um, I'm not going to go over that. And the last thing I want to go over is your uh, the the obstacle course bidden. Do you want to get in? Bidden. Okay, he's aimed at. Okay, there. It is. Falcon, there. welcome. Hey, Falcon. Sorry, I'm late. 
Hey, Falcon, you're just in time to hear the end of the galaxy journey. <laughs> Sounds about right. All right, so there is an obstacle course in the VR that I've kind of helped come up with over the years. To hone your galaxy piloting skills. That is your first obstacle. You want to stay. I in... scratch the paint on that one. Yep, you want to stay in the trench though. You don't want to go above. That's gonna leave a mark. Yeah, it leaves a mark, but that's okay. And then Idea. that would be the second so obstacle. Good. Third obstacle coming up. And that, I hit the ground. Anyway, you're going to see uh, a, a map, uh, and it's going to have, I can't spawn in the VR. Yeah, this bug is the best bug. Best bug ever. Spawn Sanctuary, spawn again in VR. <laughs> yep. I went to Indoor. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's gonna pre. Uh, you'll see the the galaxy course posted on the on the document, and it's got all the little lines of where where the obstacles are and what direction you need to be heading into. Um, it's a great practice if you want to try to hone your 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 flight skills. It gives you some uh, some low clearances as you just saw, ones where you have to pull out really quick and kind of fly and avoid trees kind of like you just saw that I didn't um, and it just it, it's it's it gives you some maneuverability where you'll need to really manipulate your keys do a lot of yaw roll ascend or descend all in unison while giving your your mouse a workout as well and let me get back to the VR And if you'd like to do that, um, I, I recommend it, especially if you're going to be one of those players that you want to kind of develop yourself as a Galaxy pilot. Um, practice will only make you better. And being able to manipulate your, your vehicle around different types of terrain is, is helpful because when push comes to shove, You'd rather crash your galaxy here in the VR rather than over on Indoor or Amherst or Esamir or any of the other continents. You want to make sure that you could you could pull off some crazy maneuvers if you need to. And the only way to to do that is to know your galaxy and what the galaxy can or cannot do. How fast you need to go. How, um, when you need to actually slow down. Do I need to do more ascend? Do I need to just mouse up quicker? Um, you're never going to know any of that unless you actually put some time in the cockpit. And I look forward to uh, putting this document out on the website to let you guys know of all... Actually, I'll do a quick flyover. I'll do it in the Valkyrie, so that way you guys can actually see all the different uh, obstacles. I see a lot of you are already in the galaxy. Go ahead and, uh, if you want, land and... Uh, can't really never mind. I'll come pick you up, so just land wherever. And I'll come pick you up. Ah, I almost had it that time. I got you. Falcon, Falcon, no! Falcon, no! Nice use of the thrusters. Coming back to the ramp to come get you guys. There's like six obstacles, seven obstacles. And it's a fun course, and it does take some, some practice to actually master. Uh, what I consider master is being able to go through the course without uh, down throttle. So once you get up to 100% speed, you stay at 100% speed. All you can do is just manipulate your other keys. Ascend, descend, pitch, yaw, roll. 
So this is the, the obstacle course. You're in the trench at this point. Underneath this one bridge. You stay in the trench. You don't really go above, like, right where I'm at. You stay here. You go underneath this second, uh, second bridge. You're going to need to pull up and go up and over these trees. You follow the dry ravine. You go forward. You make a right. You see this little, uh, this little archway. You go through this archway. Unfortunately, the back side of it is a little bit higher elevation, so you're going to need to pull up. This is different than how you told me. Yeah, I might have gotten three and four mixed up. It is actually another archway. Sorry. So let me let me go back. Whoa. Yeah, I mixed it up. My bad. I'm not looking at my other monitor. Okay. So dry ravine forward. Archway. So stay under the archway, watch out for the trees and the rock that's on your left. You continue a bank, you go under this archway, nice and big and open. But then you have a hard bank, and then another hard bank, and drop in altitude. Then you go underneath this archway, and from here you've got to do a large bank. I recommend going around this rock. This rock will give you plenty of bank angle. Once you have gone around this rock, you're basically just creating a big loop. And then remember this archway? This was the first archway when we came down, the dry ravine. You can see it right, right in front of us. You have to go back through this archway, but in the opposite direction. It is extremely hard, extremely hard because of the fact that the entry is so much more devastating than what you originally when you're going through this way it's fine pull up on your on your galaxy uh, look out uh, look out for the rock look out for the tree not a problem problem is you're coming in this way your galaxy barely fits in between these two trees while clearing this rock and I do mean barely like, it, you have to almost... It, you're threading the needle. And then you have to drop this altitude... Part, I just killed my gal. And then you have to drop altitude, basically scrape your bottom, and go through the archway to clear it. That is the obstacle course. Again, it will be in the document. It's a fun little activity, and uh, it gives you a lot of time manipulating your keys and just trying to practice with, uh, with your galaxy. I have, uh, over the years, I have trained plenty of Galaxy pilots, and there are pilots on NC that can clear that at 100% speed. Um, so, anyway, that pretty much concludes what I have to teach you and what I have to share with you guys. Um, I haven't given you guys plenty of, uh, not too many opportunities to talk or ask questions, so let's go ahead and open that up, uh, freeform. Um, anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, or something that they think is important that I have failed to mention? Uh, yeah, I got one. Uh, weapon status when you have people in the galaxy. Uh, generally, I say that uh, if no orders are given, then weapon status is yellow. But make sure that you tell the people in the gun seats if you want to keep it quiet at red, or if you want to give them free reign to fire for green. That is a very good oversight. Yes, uh, I. Because yes, I, I won't go over the reason why I forgot it, but yes, uh, there's three weapon statuses: weapons red, do not fire. Period. Unless the pilot or the squad leader tells the gunners, weapons red, do not fire. An added bonus to that: do not spot. Sometimes you could actually see the voice macro come up in chat, or you could hear the actual voice macro go off in an opposing air vehicle, especially if they have proximity. Um, so weapons red, I would say no voice macros, so don't spot and keep those guns quiet. Do not fire. Weapons yellow, only fire when fired upon. Now, different squad leads in different groups uh, across the NC 
will modify that. Do not fire unless unless uh, fired uh, and hit. So if you actually get fired at, whoop de do. But if you actually get hit, then return fire. So, um, I think the TG stance is do not fire unless fired upon. So is Kalina, am I correct in that? You are correct. Okay. So if they fire in your direction, go ahead and start returning fire. That's that's weapons yellow. Weapons green. Oh, and obviously you could go ahead with your voice macros, do all the spotting you need to. Weapons green. Fire at any and everything that you want. Obviously, you want to call out a target and try to get as many guns focused as as you can. And again, use your triple Ds. Direction. Get direction first. Get eyeballs on your target. Then describe what you want to shoot at. And then tell them how far away it is. Above them, below them, uh, medium range, long range, short range. But direction. First and foremost. Description. Second. Distance. Third. That would be my priority list on your communications and the uh, weapon statuses. Yellow, red, red, yellow, and green. Thank you for contributing that, uh, Belhay. Thank you for, for spotting that. I do appreciate it. Any other comments, concerns, questions? I just had a few. I don't know if you've covered in in the few minutes before I joined. Probably not, but go ahead. I was just going to point out um, just a few little things. One of them is the free look when you're in first person. That's, um, I guess, press down on your mouse button. When you're in first person, you can kind of turn your head without actually turning the galaxy, which can be useful to find where a waypoint is, for instance. Very valid point. I have mine deactivated for the last decade because I crashed too many vehicles with that. Um, so I, 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 would, I would tread lightly on that one. I'm definitely a task saturation already just flying the gal, so I, I, I don't use free look. I intentionally just stay away from it. Free look, and, and I'm not saying it's not a valid point, Helena. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that just free look in other vehicles, other flight vehicles, is a little bit easier. But with the Galaxy, you have the added pressure of having multiple members of your squad in the in the Galaxy. And sometimes if you are if you leave the, the gal on a straight trajectory and you use free look to look around for that thunder that you know is somewhere down there, but you don't know exactly where, you might run into something while you're looking. So I, I tread tentatively on, the, on that point. Fair enough. I was trying to change my my, uh, my buttons for the uh, for the yaw and the roll, but I don't know how to get the the swing right with the mouse to the yaw. You know how to do that? I think yes. there is a way. I don't really recommend it. Um, I'll have pictures of my personal keybinds on the document, and they might work for you. They may not, but either way, it'll identify what you're looking for and you might be able to come up with some kind of combination that may work for you i was just trying to get that it says like roll left roll right on the default is left and right but that's with the mouse moving left and right i just don't know how to program left like that movement to a key well roll left isn't that just your mouse like just yeah, I don't want that to be the mouse. I want that yeah, to be he wants, yaw. He wants, he wants mouse yaw. I, I kind of... Oh, he wants mouse... Aircraft, okay. aircraft yaw very slowly in this game. I don't really recommend trying to learn to fly with mouse yaw. Uh, I believe there is a way to do it. I don't know it. Maybe you could just uh, in, just change, change your roll keys to your yaw keys. That's what I'm trying to do, but I can't, I can't figure out how to program that left and right mouse movement as a key binding yeah I, I i believe there is a way i uh, honestly it'll mostly make moving your mouse left and right not do anything so i really don't recommend it that might be in your interface possibly i don't uh it's definitely not under key binds nope it's not under interface either honestly i've never had that yeah. question before I, I i honestly don't know how to answer it it, it is really a. Uh, it's really unintuitive 
for somebody who just plays the rest of planet side doesn't fly at all because obviously the rest of the planet side you move your mouse to the left and your your cursor goes left but yeah flying is just, just different seems, yeah <laughs> it's, uh, it's very different it makes my brain turn inside out i can't fly yeah i get it you, i will say you get used to it and you're probably better off for having gotten used to it because your role controls are so much more sensitive that that's usually what you want to be doing anyway hmm, okay I had just a, a couple. Yep, yeah, and I was just gonna say that might be a great question for Discord because I foresee probably lots of people chiming in to try to help you with that. So just create a thread on uh, on Discord in, in member section or or PS2 topics, and you'll you'll probably get lots of people trying to help you out with that. But Helena, uh, yeah, I think you had a few more points. Yeah, just really quick, as you probably already know, but you lose um, a lot of control over the the flight surfaces, I think is what they're called, um, when you're on fire. So if you're going down to land and you're on fire, uh, basically just aim for the sky and you're going to fall out of it anyway. So just hope you actually land if you're on fire. Um, just know about that. There's also a really handy thing in the settings that uh, Hydra may have went over called analog throttle, which is what I've used right now to hover at the next point, which is 10 meters. So if you guys take a look out at the west, I've landed on the ground. If I turn on analog throttle, I actually lift off. And if you guys tried to load in, it might be kind of difficult because galaxies, uh, every aircraft hovers at 10 meters from the ground, which is what I am right now. So if you're under me, Goblin, can you get in? Where would you find that setting? Analog throttle? Uh, analog throttle. I have mine bound to X. It's under aircraft and analog or throttle analog is what. So it's under uh, key. Negative buttons. on the getting in. Yeah, Goblin cannot get in. I'm too high just because of that. Um, the benefit to analog throttle is instead of holding S and slowing down, you just tap, in my case, X right below S. Um, it stops you in 75% of the distance that holding S does in testing. Um, so you do stop a little bit quicker, which can be useful. Um, but the downside to that is you go into a hover like this. If I just tap forward, then I will basically reset. Not doing it. it, was doing it several times before, but if I go back a little bit. Going up to 10 meters, it's ascending without me doing anything. I'm just going to tap forward, and if you're ever hovering and you 10 meters and you can't figure out why, um, just tap a forward button or some kind of movement and it'll park you on the ground, basically. It, it'll get rid of that auto hover that um, happens automatically. Uh very cool. I don't have mine bound and never knew that, so new info for me, 12 years into the game. And what analog throttle basically does is it will it'll look for an analog control, like a like a, a, a joystick and throttle controller that you have, and you won't have one, so it'll just be like, okay, I guess that's zero. Yeah, instead of just... Zero your throttle immediately. Instead of over a second or two, just taking down your thrust level from 100 to zero, it just instantly, and a snap just sets it to zero, and that makes you stop sooner, basically. Yeah. I have it bound, and I always forget to press it. I've had a lot of uh, ESF pilots recommend to me that I should just use analog S, which may be true, but uh, I haven't, I haven't yet tried that. Could cool. be. I prefer the. I, d I just prefer having them separate, but yeah, I can see the use case for both. Cool. Thank you. I, like I said, twelve years into the game, just learned something. I'm not going to be doing a lot of reverse maneuvers in the galaxy, though, so. Any other tidbits of information that I may not know or something I overlooked? That's all I had written down. Anybody else? All right. This training went on 41 minutes. Well, we started late, so I'll just say probably half an hour longer than I expected. Um, I will try to... Well, I think the training is pretty, pretty straightforward. I can't really. Maybe I could talk a faster. <laughs> but I'll post up the video and put the link into the write-up, and you'll see the write-up down in the Discord and training courses, and that will be posted up uh, in full probably within the next forty-eight hours. I'd hey, like I, I, I figured out how to make that that control right and left thing work you got to use your arrow keys and that'll do it oh so wait so you're taking Looking your hand off the mouse 
No, no, no. When I just wanted to change left and right from the using the mouse movement, I've got ammo so my y'all uh, to program it. I just use my the the arrow keys to program it. Oh, just to, oh, okay. Wow. So it's just a program. Okay. I was about to say if you're flying and you're taking your hand off the mouse, that might turn out to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be bad. <laughs> I think that's how we go in Battlefield 1942. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for coming out to the training. Uh, hopefully, you learned something. Doesn't have to be everything, but hopefully it just turns you into from an okay pilot to a good pilot or a good pilot into a great pilot, or hopefully it just familiarizes yourself with uh, the vehicle that uh, we do use um, pretty often. So, uh, thanks. Uh I'll uh, I'll try to come up with a, a clip of me having just uh, flown almost all of the Gal course so that people can see it from the inside of the galaxy. Since I did do that and then wreck it on the last uh, on the, it, it, it should be enough to at least uh, to at least demonstrate what the course is. Yeah, except don't blow up the Gal. Thanks, Andrew. Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, good night, guys. Take care. Good night.